Let's start configuring identity into our project. If you're not familiar with identity, identity is a, is a bunch of methods that someone else created for us that helps us dealing with like logging in and, and creating new users, things like that. And it's a bunch of classes, uh, like a user class, a role class, all these classes that were already created for us. If you ever, ever had to create a membership uh, system from the ground up, it could be a, a lot of work. It's a daunting task. And to save you a lot of time, you could just use identity and just use all the classes and methods that they give us. And there's a lot of different classes and methods, like basically almost anything you can think of, you can find it within the documentation. Like let's say you want to you know, check a password, make sure it's a valid password. Well, identity gives you a method for that. And you don't have to create that from the ground up. And identity is really, you'll learn to love identity. If you had a, ever had to create a membership system from the ground up, you'll, you'll love identity. But let's go, uh, first thing is we'll go and we'll start, uh, start creating our user model. And we're gonna go and have, uh, have it derived from identity user. So let's go create our user model. If we go inside the data access layer, and open that up and then inside of the entities we'll create a new one and we'll call it user so new class user you can call it anything you want uh, I'll stick with user that'd be good and then what we're gonna do is have this class derive from what something identity gives us identity gives us this uh, class called identity user so identity user and we'll need to pull this in click on this and we'll pull this in from uh, identity so this is going to give us a whole bunch of columns. When we do our migration, it's going to give us a whole bunch of columns like email, username. We can actually check that out. If you hit F12 and then click on this. And out of the box, this is what identity gives us. All these properties. We'll find all these columns when we do our migration in, in the database. Now, what if you want to add more uh, properties than that? Well, you could just add them right here. That's the whole reason of setting this up. Now, if you don't want to add any more properties, you could just leave it at the default and it will just create a default identity user for you when we do our migration. But I want to add one more property for now. And later on, we'll be changing this, but I'll just give the user the ability to add a company name. That'd be good. So com company name. Uh, there we go. So this column will be added in the database when we do our migration migration. Now let's go and set up our uh, application DB context. We, we need to tell our application about this new user entity. Now that we set up our user model, now let's go and set up our application DB context. And we're gonna have it derived from identity DB, DB context. And identity DB context is identity as well. And there's different ways you can set this up. Let's say you're sticking with just the default identity. You don't wanna change your roles. You don't wanna change your users. You could just use identity DB context and I'll show you that. But uh, I want to change my user around. That's the whole reason I created that user model. So we're going to include a user type uh, with our identity DB context. I could actually just copy this. Let's go into our application DB context in our project. And we'll open up that right there. So right now we have it deriving from the DB context. I want to change this to this. Now let's say, for example, we uh, do, oh, let's pull it in first. Now let's say we go and we uh, do a migration right now. Right now it would just use all the default stuff identity gives us. Identity gives us our user identity, our role identity, all that would just stay as, as its default when we uh, do our migration. But I want to change my user identity. And uh, that's the whole reason for creating this user model. So let's go and change this by including it here. I don't want the user uh, entity to be at the default. So I want to include the user. And um, uh, that automatically is getting pulled in. Okay, good. So now that company name property should be added when we do our migration. Now that that is done, we need to configure our startup class. So to pull identity into our startup class, we could use this method add identity core. And here I have that in the browser. And here they show you different ways you could use it. Like uh, down here, we could go and we pass in our user entity we just created. 
and then we could go and set up different options for let's say for example you don't want real long passwords uh, let's say you're testing and you you only want to enter in short passwords well you could go and change those password options using this and we'll do that actually in a second we'll check this out but um, also it returns a identity builder and uh, we're going to assign that to a variable so actually let's go and copy that let's go inside the startup class and inside the API open this up then within the configure services we'll just uh, create this variable right at the top and then uh, so paste to this and we'll need to pull this in identity builder from identity and that's uh, from right here and then you could create a variable name you can name it whatever you want I'll just call it builder and then here we'll, we'll the services dot add identity core and then like in the documentation it says uh, you need to set a type to the user And then we'll make sure we pull this in from our data access layer and then make sure you close it up correctly then here we can set our different options so you can call this whatever you want as well I'll just uh, call it that and then you just go option dot password dot and then whatever you want to change now here they got several different options like require digit require length uh, let's start off with the first one and I'll just set this to false so no dig digits are required so false and then if we go back to the documentation there's more things you can change and let's go and check that out if you click on identity options right click and then open in the new tab and then here are the different uh, settings you can change like we're working within the password and we're going to be coming back to this actually we need to change the email settings I'm going to do that later when we're working on that video but here if you go and you right click on uh, this and open this in a new link uh, password options in a new tab and then here are the different options that we were just looking at so we just changed the required digit and here are other options that we could change and then if we go back here if you if you're not sure what options you could change you could always just go and just uh, open these up and uh, that'll give you a, a list of different things you could change so right now we're working within the password one so let's go and, and change these four settings over so if we go back here and then uh, back to this so password And then this I'm just going to set to four. Now I'm going to be coming back and changing all this back to the the default. I'm just doing this during testing, so I don't have to type out real long, complicated passwords every time I want to test the forms. Uh, so this is just temporary. And then there's one more thing for now. What we need to do is builder that that variable we just created. So builder, and then we want to go and add entity framework store, and there it is, right at the top. And then we need to set the type to this, and that's the application DB context. So application. And that is it. And that is it for now. So now um, we're going to be coming back and visiting this again because we we're going to want to add on more uh, features then. But for now, this will get us started. So now what we want to do is we want to create a migration but first we need to go and drop the database so if we go back here and open this up so what we're going to do is we're going to drop the database get rid of this because we're using the db context on that and then when we do our new migration we it should give us a whole bunch of different tables that identity is going to give us and uh, we will do that in the next video so i'll see you then